violence against women is a scourge that affects all of us women, men, our families, our communities, and our countries, whether we are talking about India, as in this film, Sri Lanka, or Canada. And so ending gender based violence is a human rights imperative. Canada's feminist development assistance policy recognizes the necessity of ending all forms of gender based violence. It recognizes that experiencing violence has a devastating impact on families, communities, and society as a whole. There is an inequality, a basic inequality between the sexes. It is really something, a dialogue that we have to have across borders, across class. And if we can take this and use it as a dialogue, I would be, I would be very pleased. That's the reason that Neelam and myself did the film in the first place, is to start a dialogue. Questions we need to ask ourselves are, would we still be outraged if the men there looked like any of us? Would it look, if it looked like our father, if it looked like your son, if it looked like any of us in this, in this kind of setting? That's a question to ask. The woman looked any different if we say later found that uh, she had a tattoo or if she was, say, drunk? Would we still be as outraged is also, also questions that we can ask ourselves. We don't become who we are in isolation, which is what the mantra of the film has become, because it is the complicity of society. If men are a certain way, there is a reason. Yes, you can talk about uh, patriarchy, misogyny, inequality, but where does it all start? I think it starts with the family. And in that, the mother is as, as complicit as the father and class is as complicit as race. Circumstances are as complicit. So to humanize, because if they're monsters, they become like cartoons. But if they're human, and you can catch that glimpse of humanity, then we can say, oh my God, we better do something about this. This film touches upon some data that was actually released by a study conducted in Sri Lanka a couple of years ago, in 2013 which looked at attitudes of men and boys towards violence against women and girls. In societies where you find that the legal systems are not working, they're not holding these men accountable, the social structures are changing. For instance, in this film, what came through to me was this urbanization, dislocation, alienation. The social structures of censure that existed also no longer exist. So in a sense, you're caught in this system where the rule of law does not function and neither does anything else. So who holds you accountable? I don't think it's a cause and effect because a lot of people are victims of many things. But how do you kind of transcend that, transform that into making your life worthy uh, and giving it a certain uh, social validity is really the impulse of the person behind the experience. The movie, is, it addresses a larger problem, but it is very much a personal movie. It looks into very much of personalized spaces, thought, thought processes, behaviors of people. It makes anybody question, am I, do I have those traits as well? So in that way, it's very provoking. The question of almost this cycle or perpetuating of violence, and you looked at the stories of each of these, of these men, and you thought that maybe if something had happened differently, at a key point in their lives, that they might have turned out differently, that they might have had a had been, had, had uh, you know a, a different attitude to women, and and this this they would not have been complicit in this, they would not have been a part of this. Uh, so I think that really was one of the things that, that struck me. The complexity of this issue was really highlighted by the movie, and it's a no simple approach, no simple solution to this issue, and everyone has to um, start from their home and start from their own families. And that's a very strong uh, message coming out from the movie. So it's a great tool to um, have a dialogue and uh, reflect our own perception, our own bias, and what we can really do as an individual and as a part of the family and community. In a sense, watching this film and showing it to us, you are preaching to the converted. Um, have you shown it to people who would not potentially be in this room and are there plans to share this film um, 
with a wider audience in Sri Lanka. It's been screened you know, from Patagonia to the Arctic in small communities, in large communities, in, through NGOs, through schools, through universities, which is what it's meant for. And so if all of you here feel that they can use the film to make a difference or to start a dialogue, it's yours. We have to take responsibility for the fact that we tend to pay attention only when it's very brutal. And I think we also do that because then it becomes easier for us to distance ourselves from it and from taking responsibility for it. We don't have to wish it for a larger organization to come and eradicate violence. It's not going to happen that way, I think. I think it'll happen when every individual, men and women, girls and boys, wake up and say, we want a society that is just, as is humane, and where we, we can actually make a change. You know, I don't have to be a filmmaker, I don't have to be the head of the UN to do that. I can just be myself, Deepa, go home and see how I treat my daughter and my son, and make sure that equality starts right there. This we can all do, can't we?